Hello there and welcome to Donington Park for rounds 11 and 12 of the British Formula 3 International Series. And yes, we're finally here after the races from April were rescheduled because of redevelopment on the circuit. So this will give our drivers a chance to get to grips with one of the best racing circuits in the country. At just under two miles in length, the national circuit is the shortest layout around here, but it's perfect for the F3 cars. Mm, I've never been here. It looks all like flowing and fast corners. The bottom of Craner Curves, I mean, it's just such a technical corner, so easy to go off. The nature of it's fast and flowing, and yeah, it's, it's definitely one I enjoy. Since the last time I came, the circuit's actually changed. I mean, it just gets more polished, the tarmac. My favourite corner here is Coppice. It looks good. I think it will suit me. At the halfway point of the season, we've really seen the championship open up. At Snetterton, Ricky Christodoulou was the sixth driver to take a win so far this year. Ricky has shown he has had the pace all season, but the luck hasn't always gone his way. However, at Snetterton, he powered his way to the front and never looked back, putting his title ambitions right back on track. We've all been working really hard since the start of the year, even when uh, my budget wasn't secure. We still knew uh, I had the pace from my first official test that I did, so uh, yeah, it was really good to uh, give myself the win and for the team. Snetterton also saw Renga van der Zander take his second win of the year and the Dutch driver is starting to look like a real title contender. Well, the, the Snetterton race, I was nine seconds off and uh, nine seconds um, faster than anybody in front of everybody else, so that was very good. And um, no, it was great to be there and uh, another win on my name, so it's good. So it's still Aussie Daniel Ricciardo who leads the way, but the high-tech pairing of Walter Grubmuller and Renga van der Zander are closing in behind. At the halfway point, it's proved to be a good season so far for Daniel Ricciardo, although there's still a long way to go. We're getting a lot of challenges from the other teams now, and we're really, uh, you know, got to stay on top of it, but looking forward to it. And here at Donington, we'll see if hopefully we can get another win. Uh, you know, it's been a while since Silverstone, and I missed that top step. So, you know, definitely out here for that. But, um, you know, if not, definitely podium and, and some points is what I've got to keep getting to try and get in the championship. So for round 11, it's Renga van der Zander who takes the high-tech team's fifth pole position in a row. And with Walter Grubmuller alongside him, they really are the team to beat. Here's Martin. Here's the lineup for round 11 of the Cooper Tires British Formula 3 International Series. Another all high-tech front row, Renga van der Zander's third pole. And Walter Grubmuller, the Hockenheim winner, sits alongside. Points leader Danny Ricciardo lines up third and he must stay in touch from here on in. Carlos Huertas, a very strong run to fourth, his best position on the grid. He lines up ahead of Max Chilton and Adriano Butside. Snetterton winner Ricky Christodoulou is seventh, ahead of the national class pole sitter Gabriel Diaz. Wayne Boyd makes it ninth on the grid, ahead of Daisuke Nakajima, who rounds out the ten. Here we go then, revs rise, ready for the start. Great launch from the front row. Oh, Daisuke Nakajima, look, the red, white and blue car, great start. He picks up at least one place. And closest to us, Walter Grubmuller goes around the nose of his pole-sitting teammate. He's got the lead. We're right behind with Adriano beside in fifth. No, now in sixth behind Daniel Ricciardo, who was third on the grid. So a poor start for the Australian who leads the championship. He's in fifth. There's Grubmuller leading. Blue and white car in third place. That is Carlos Huertas as high as he's been all season. The Colombian chasing Renga van der Zander, the pole man who's in second spot. So great start for him. There's Max Chilton, Daniel Ricciardo, the Red Bull car 21, and we're right behind him with Adriano Bezaid. Shows his nose to the inside, but that puts him offline through coppice and out onto the straight where there is no longer a Dunlop bridge. It looks very wide and open without it. Big weave from Van der Zander in second place. Now, as he picked up a bit of dirt on his tyres, maybe that he's worried about. Anyway, on board with our race leader, Walter Grubmuller. And the confidence he's now got after winning in Hockenheim is so evident. Just driving away from his teammate. Oh, and Daniel Ricciardo looking at Max Chilton into Redgate. That's a try for fourth. Behind that again with Adriana Bezaid. Again losing a little bit of ground through Redgate. Drops back over the kerbs. 
sweeping through Hollywood, down the Craner curves to the old hairpin. Nice and easy on the way in, drill the throttle at the apex and a great run out, exactly copybook stuff there from Danny Ricardo. all over the back of Max Chilton who carried a little too much speed into the corner and there's Preside around the outside of the championship leader into McLean, you can't do that, that doesn't work and the copies he's trying again for fourth place can't get through, but he's still there beside Max Chilton, out onto the straight, and he's still there beside Max Chilton. Fantastic stuff from the T-Sport man. Adriano beside, trying to get his nose in front, and he's done it. Yes, he has. What a race this is turning into already. Oh, fantastic stuff from beside. Absolutely sensational. And that's uh, Howell Lloyd and Henry Arundel colliding further back. They didn't quite get it right. Replay at the start, great launch from Walter Grubmuller, absolutely time to perfection, just overhauling his pole-sitting teammate, makes up the gap and turns in in the lead. Daniel Ricciardo under pressure from Ricky Christodoulou, more than that, in fact, Christodoulou has gone by him for sixth position, now Ricciardo fights back on the inside. But the Australian's two closest championship rivals are first and second, he can't continue to lose places like this. From third on the grid down to seventh, it's not great, is it? He might be back up to six now, but he better hope that his car gets better as the race goes longer rather than worse, because at the moment he's got nothing to show the leaders. T-Sport and Hi-Tech both have got a better setup on their cars than the Carlin man here. Tough times for our points leader. Gabriel Diaz back in the pits, uh, stopped out on the circuit. That scrambled the safety car. Looks like he's got a major problem. Getting ready to restart now from behind the safety car. Away we go. Walter Grubmuller charging down to Redgate once more. Renga van der Sander close towards him. Daniel Ricciardo at the restart trying to make up a place. That's Max Chilton. Chilton holding down fifth at the moment in that white and blue machine. But the high tech cars again jumping away at the start. Grubmuller leading van der Sander. Carlos Huertas in third place, the yellow car in fourth, Adriano Preside, and there's the battle for fifth. Two Carlin cars, number one, Max Chilton, and number 21, Daniel Ricciardo, and the red and white car of Ricky Christodoulou, 51, is having a really good look at him there. Couldn't go around the outside at McLean's. Maybe he needs lessons from Adriano Preside. And the other yellow car of Wayne Boyd is right behind Long, long queue coming down the straight, and again, weaving from van der Zander down the straight, just as he did earlier in the race. Clearly not feeling what he wants to feel with the car's tyres. So, Max Chilton again under pressure. Look at the top of the screen. The white nose comes towards us, the yellow nose tucks out of the slipstream, then cuts back to the inside. Didn't so much sell a dummy as change his mind there, really, Ricardo. And Chilton fights back on the inside, right-hander at Hollywood, he's there. Now the left-hander, oh, it goes back to Ricardo, and Max has to tuck back in for the old hairpin, or risk a big crash down at the bottom of the hill. So Daniel Ricardo's perseverance helped him there, but it does seem that his car is just handling better as the fuel load burns off. On full tanks, it was not looking very comfortable. Still, he's not got back up to Max Chilton, his own Carlin teammate, and he's really just fighting a rear guard action. There's Wayne Boyd, won the British Formula 4 title here last year. At the end of the season at Donington Park, we chase him with Daisuke Nakajima. Nakajima really enjoying himself here at Donington Park, has a very late lunch, great Goddard's move through the car at the apex and beyond it, really threw it in sideways like a rally driver. Oh, and there's the other T-Sport car beside the yellow machine. And here comes Ricardo. This is a strong move for fourth place. Gets him. All beside, looking back again. We've seen him go around the outside of a couple of corners to pick up places, but Beside's car seems to be going off as the fuel load lightens, getting less handy than it was early on. So, Danny Ricciardo starting to regain some lost ground. And there's his teammate, Max Chilton. Wow, Wayne Boyd, look at that. The Boyd is definitely on the wing there, taking off as he exits the grass at the old hairpin. 
Closing stages of the final lap. Daniel Ricciardo is going to come up short here. He's not going to have a chance to catch Renga van der Zander. And that means that the high-tech driver will follow his teammate Walter Grubmuller across the line shortly. On board with Grubmuller. Last time down the straight in race one here. Round 11 of the British Formula 3 Championship. And the Austrian who won in Germany is now going to win for the first time on British soil. Victory and a 1-2 for the high-tech team. On board with Daisuke Nakajima, down into Goddard's for the last time. Eighth position behind Ricky Christodoulou. And the national class win is going to go to Daniel McKenzie. Well, there's confirmation of our result. Daniel Ricciardo fought his way back up to where he started. Third behind the high-tech twins and our comfortable race winner at Donington Park, Walter Grubmuller. Walter, many congratulations. A great start. Yeah, thank you. I just yeah, managed to get off the line real great and yeah, I just managed to take the lead in the first corner. Then, yeah, it was a pretty boring race. It wasn't easy because obviously the track was real slippery because it had rained before, so I was struggling with the rear end of the car for most of the race, but yeah, I just managed to bring it home, luckily. So a perfect one-two for the high-tech team. They'll be delighted with that, but don't go away because we've got another race to come after the break. British Formula 3 has a long history as being the proving ground for future Formula 1 stars like Ayrton Senna, Mika Hakkinen and Jensen Button. And the latest name to join that list is the 2008 British Formula 3 champion, Jaime Alguaswari. Here's Martin Haven to tell us the story. Jaime impressed everybody last year in what was one of the hardest fought title battles in British Formula 3 history. It went all the way to the final race of the year here at Donington Park, where he managed to clinch the title and become the youngest ever British F3 champ. And it was announced this week that the 19-year-old will drive for Toro Rosso. From Hungary onwards, he will become Formula 1's youngest ever driver. Well, absolutely chuffed a bit. I mean, uh, Jaime won the championship here at Donington uh, only about seven, eight months ago, so for him to be making the step into F1 already is, uh, uh, is quite incredible. He's a, he's a great driver, um, he's really in at the deep end, bless him, he's done no testing at all, um, so he's going to be straight into a Grand Prix. Um, but, you know, he's a good, sensible kid, he's the youngest Formula One driver ever. Um, we at Carlin are ever so proud that he drove for us and we thank Red Bull uh, for putting him with us. Uh, and I, I really hope he does well and if people don't judge him too quickly, so next year is, is, is going to be his big year, but it's, it's great news and great for British F3 yet again. Jaime was part of Red Bull's junior driving programme run by the Carlin team in F3. This year, Daniel Ricciardo is in that position and it must be a huge boost for him knowing just what could be possible. It does make everything a reality. And, uh, you know, obviously there's a few more steps in between F1 after F3, but if someone's going to say, you know, we want you in now, well, then you're definitely not going to turn it down. So, yeah, you know, the future is, is unknown, but I guess, you know, if you get results and do what they ask, then it, you know, presents a lot of opportunities. So for round 12 here at Donington Park, it's Daniel Ricciardo for Carlin Motorsport back on pole position, halting that high-tech front row domination. Now, can he convert this to a win? Here's Martin. Round 12, the British Formula 3 International Series, underlining what an international affair it is. Australia's Daniel Ricciardo on top form on pole position ahead of Brazil's Adriano Butzide. Dutchman Renga van der Zander heads up an all-high-tech row two with his Austrian teammate Walter Grubmuller. Britain's Max Chilton and Colombia's Carlos Huertas line up on row three ahead of Japan's Daisuke Nakajima. And then three British drivers, Henry Arundel, Wayne Boyd and Jay Bridger round out the top ten. And Brazil's Gabriel Diaz is our national class pole sitter in 12th. Revs rise, ready for the start of round 12. The Cooper Tires British Formula 3 International Series. Heavy rain during the preceding race, but the track at the moment is pretty dry as Daniel Ricciardo jumps away from the line. Wade Boyd out there on the very wet grass, and that'll cost him a few places as his teammate Adriano Bazide dives into second place around the first corner. So the front row men making a good getaway on board with Daisuke Nakajima. Ninth on the grid, right in front of him is Max Chilton. This is the battle then for fifth place. Chilton defending on the inside, hangs on at the old hairpin. 
but away goes Daniel Ricciardo, the dominant man in the second qualifying session, and he really must turn this into a race win to consolidate his championship advantage over the two high-tech drivers who were first and second in race one. Nakajima again, monstering the back of Chilton. Ooh, a little bit of a wobble there from Walter Grubmuller, showing just how slippery conditions are. On board with Nakajima. Has he got a good toe going down the straight? He's looking close. Chilton's thinking about Grubmuller as well, and in the end, neither can make a move. Long queue building up behind Walter Grubmuller, and trouble for Victor Garcia. It's raining hard down here at Coppice, and he's had a big impact with somebody. It's very slippery. Down here at Redgate as well, very wet. So the rain has returned, and they're all on slick tyres. No grooves to shift the water. Very treacherous indeed, and that's Philip Major. Uh, looks like there was a, some impact between the two of them. Whoa, huge lose for Poseidon. He hangs on to it somehow in second place. Daniel Ricciardo will be brought under control by the safety car, which is being scrambled. Field slowing right down, and that gives everybody else a chance to catch on to the back of the Aussie. And here's why it was up at Coppice. Looks like a mistake by Philip Major, got collected by Garcia, and Dominic Storey going across the gravel. Storey making it out the other side. Ready to go once more, green, 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 as the safety car has peeled off, and Daniel Ricciardo tries to jump away, but going with him, the yellow and white car of Adriano beside. Van der Zander and Grubman are third and fourth, and that's Jay Bridger trying to go down the inside of Ricky Christodoulou for eighth. And there's Wayne Boyd. The yellow car moves past Bridger. He's up into ninth place. Meanwhile, his teammate in second position, right behind the Red Bull car of Daniel Ricciardo, sweeping down the Craner curves. It's very wet indeed. Van der Zander with the yellow helmet in the black car. He moves up. Does he into second place? Yes, he does. Up to McLean's, all oh, very wide for the Australian contact between the two of them. Van der Zander stays on, a big looping spin for Ricardo. He'll lose one, two, three, four, five places. Renga van der Zander leads just from Adriano Brazide, and I think the Brazilian wants to try and make a move here as well. He's got a run going down the straight. Here he comes, van der Zander with the inside line, Brazide on the outside, and that means the Dutchman will hang on to the lead. Third place, Walter Grubel, a fourth match, Chilton. We're a little further back with Daisuke Nakajima. That's Ricky Christodoulou right in front of us. There's Ricky, number 51. He's in ninth place. And here is our race leader, Renga van der Zander. Max Chilton looking inside. Walter Grubel for third. Can't quite get through. Wayne Boyd, the yellow car around the outside, and Daniel Ricciardo right up behind the silver machine of Henry Arundel. And that puts Boyd up into seventh from 13th on lap one. And Daniel Ricciardo now down to eighth place, lower even than he was in race one, and it is raining again. So it is going to be very slippery here, and that could mean more trouble for the front runners. There is Henry Arundel coming into the wettest part of the circuit, drifts wide. Oh, and it looks like Wayne Boyd had a good run going as we look at Jay Bridger. Oh, and they got by Arundel, and Boyd stays in front of Ricardo. In 10th place with Daisuke Nakajima, goes inside Ricky Christodoulou for ninth. Oh, it's three wide, goodness me! Jay Bridger was on the outside, he passed them both, and now he's doing Arundel as well. Down the Starkey straight, Goddard's at the end of the lap. I don't think he's got enough. No, he hasn't. Arundel hangs on to eighth position just. But Nakajima, fantastic handling of his car in these slippery conditions. Now he's got another run on Henry Arundel, and this is a done deal, surely. No, Arundel goes wide. Nakajima to the inside. This time, yes, he's got eighth position. Fantastic. Three places in half a lap. And here's the trio right in front of him. The blue car is Huertas, the yellow car Boyd, the dark blue car with the Red Bull colours. That is our championship leader, Daniel Ricciardo. They're fifth, sixth and seventh, and Ricciardo not content with staying there. Well, here's why he's so far down. At McLean's away from the restart. Renga van der Zander getting inside. Contact on the slippery surface. Well, that looked like a racing incident. Oh, Victor Correa, big lose right in front of Max Snegarev, who took to the grass to avoid him. Carlos Huertas under pressure. Daniel Ricciardo drives around the outside. And there's Snegarev, looks like he's stuck by the old hairpin. 
down the hill. Wayne Boyd having to go at Max Chilton, tucked back behind him. And a huge wobble for Daniel Ricciardo as they get to the yellow flag zone at the old hairpin. Doesn't get by Carlos Huertas. There's our race leader, the black car, Renga van der Zander, the yellow car, Adriano beside. Third place, oh my goodness, here comes Boyd around the outside of fourth place, Max Chilton just drives right around him, just like beside did earlier on. Snegarev rejoins on the slippery surface. Tough weekend for the Russian and the T-Sport boys side by side. Boyd going for second place inside his teammate, Adriano beside. Fantastic. Renga van der Zander still leads, and he's getting a black and white flag. Poor driving standards, that means. Well, that might be immaterial because Wayne Boyd looks unstoppable again around the outside. Fantastic! Just drives clear around van der Zander, and that's the experience of Donington Park, knowing where the grip is to be found in these slippery conditions as he completes a remarkable comeback from this poor start. Trying to go around Henry Aaron on all four wheels on the grass. Might have well been on the brakes there, there's so little grip. Drive-through penalty confirmed for Renga van der Zander, and that'll take him out of the equation. Final couple of corners for Wayne Boyd in the rest of the field, and he will be as delighted as anyone to see the chequered flag. For him, it'll be a first time in British Formula 3 at the track at which he claimed last year's British Formula 4 championship in the final race weekend. His first win in British F3 in the most trying conditions. And it's a 1-2 for the T-Sport team as Adriano Basai takes second place ahead of Walter Gruppmuller. And Daniel McKenzie making it a Donington double as he wins again in the national class. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, well happy. <laughs> Two wins for Daniel McKenzie, great weekend for him. Grubmuller's on the podium again, but for T-Sport, it's a 1-2 result. Adriano Beside following our winner, Wayne Boyd. Wayne, well, it's been a, a, a tough first half of your season, but you've finally done it. You've got that F3 win. How does that feel? Yeah, I just absolutely mega. I just can't believe it. Um, the start of the year has been pretty tough. I mean, we've getting me closer and closer and closer. And I just hadn't had a great run in qualifying every time, but now I've got a win. After dropping down to well back down to good to get the win, it's just brilliant. Just can't thank a team enough and everyone who's helped me and DHL, my manager, my dad, and everyone. Just big thanks to them. As Daniel McKenzie consolidates his lead of the national class, just 13 points separate Daniel Ricciardo and Walter Grubmuller at the top of the table, ahead of the fiercely squabbling pack behind them. So that's it from Donington Park, a great result for T-Sport, and congratulations yet again to Wayne Boyd taking his first Formula 3 win. Now the drivers won't have much time to rest because we're heading over into Europe to the very famous Spa-Francorchamps circuit in Belgium. So I'll see you there. Bye-bye. Moving at a more steady pace next door four, paving the way for an afternoon of racing with the morning line.